Welcome back to Wrench. On today's show, we are going to get this 1969 Porsche 911 restoration, otherwise known as the blasphemy build, to the paint shop. This is an exciting day, everybody. Finally, all the planets have aligned and we are going to try to get this very car down to Costa Mesa Collision in, of course, Costa Mesa, California, where Henry and his team will, uh, along with me, hopefully helping, uh, will get this thing down to final paint and get this thing in the color it's going to be. Uh, I am mostly recovered from my injuries. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I had a pretty major injury with my uh, blaster. I have a basically a sandblasting business and I injured my leg really badly, um, but I'm okay. I'm not limping around too much anymore. Uh, it's still healing, but I am able to get around and do things. Now, if you'd like to see it in action, if you are that kind of person that wants to see it in person, it's not too terribly gory. Uh, but I put it at the end of this video. If you wanna see what I did, it was really weird and fluky, uh, and I will talk you through it when the time comes. Here's the challenge of the day. I have a dolly, like this thing is sitting on this dolly, but it's not secured to anything. I've also got my hood just sitting on there, and that, of course, can't do. Uh, it can't be on a truck, and maybe the hood flies off. That would be all really bad. So I have to first figure out how I'm going to affix the car to the dolly, uh, probably using some kind of strapping. And then I've got to figure out how I'm going to attach the hood. Probably just throw the hinges back on, if I'm being honest, and then duct tape or do something to keep it from flapping up. Shop Dog Ben is, in effect, really excited about this day. Uh, so here's the car. It looks great. I'm very excited about how this thing is going to turn out. Uh, however, we have a couple things, a couple challenges. I've got this big old metal table dolly that this thing is on, but the, literally the car is just sitting on it. Obviously the car's got its own weight. Uh, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is wrap some straps around this cross member here, and then I don't know to what. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the rear yet. I haven't quite figured out what I can attach anything to, to be honest, uh, on either side. So I've gotta sort that out as well. And uh, yeah, let's just make it so the car doesn't fly off the dolly at highway speeds for the 25 minute drive it is down to Costa Mesa Collision. All right, I think I've got a plan. I'm gonna cross both sets of straps in the front and in the rear, and that hopefully gives me enough cross stability to not move the whole thing off of the dolly. All right, this is what I came up with. Using the roll cage reinforcements diagonally and then reinforcing from the middle to pull the straps back so they didn't pop off the back of these posts. Uh, and I think I should be good to go if I do a similar plan on the front. Got the big boy straps for the front. Raphael and I, thanks Raphael, thanks Raphael, uh, got the hood on, put the hinges on, lightly bolted and then lightly strapped just so it doesn't go anywhere. I've got towels on the inside so it doesn't scratch everything up. I've got the entire car secured to the dolly 
And then the door, the doors are closed uh, with a bungee cord, so they shouldn't flap open in the middle of the drive either. So now the big challenge is to get it from here out to the street. So I gotta move a bunch of cars and we're gonna fight gravity on this one because it's not exactly the easiest thing to move. Well, we're gonna try to be the Keystone cops here and get this thing out of, this is gonna be like a Benny Hill episode. Uh, <laughs> That's what it's gonna look like in sped up time to get this thing on the street. All right, dudes, AAA is called. They're gonna be here in about 15 minutes. Uh, we gotta get this beast out of the garage, which is not the easiest task in the world. It's a little clunky, if you will. Kind of just, once it gets going in a direction, it just wants to go because the dolly weighs a billion pounds. But uh, okay, and we've got a weird like off camber driveway thing that wants to make it go that way, but we need to go that way. So let's give it a go. Well, we've had a bit of a hitch. AAA guy got here and's like, I can't do it because it's on a dolly. And I've done it with AAA like so many times, but I've actually never tried to transport a car that's on a dolly. So, okay, going to call another tow truck tomorrow and hopefully have some better luck uh, and get it down to Costa Mesa. All right. Angel has it together. I'm obsessed with it. Plus he likes to show a little calf when he's working. He just likes to throw a little. I don't know what I mean, I'm just stretching. <laughs> Henry. Finally here. It has made it. <laughs> After literally two years of body work. Uh, a long time coming. Getting it, it to, great, though. It getting it great. to this phase. Uh, crazily, you know, once it was outside, it definitely revealed. I'm like, oh, geez, I thought that was good. That was the whole thing about little... that clear I was telling you about. Yeah. You a little bit of sheen to it, so you yeah. get a little bit of the, you get kind of sighted a little bit. Yeah. So what I, sunlight. what I did here is I just like massively coated. Which is fine. The la it's got runs everywhere, right. which it doesn't matter. I feel like, I felt like more primer the better. Well, we're gonna block it down like with this product a million it works times as a almost like a putty. Like I said, this product you can actually roll it on if you wanted to. So it's a high build. It's uh, the more you put on it, it's not gonna hurt anything because we're gonna sand it. We're gonna get some a little bit more aggressive sandpaper. So since there are quite a bit of runs and stuff, yeah. But the more aggressive sandpaper, it's just gonna block it. So we'll guide coat it, yeah, and we'll take the block to it. And whatever low spots in it, you have enough material there, it should cover up the low spots. Hopefully. Yeah. At this point, do you just sand and use the sheen as the first guide coat? Or would you guide coat? No, we're this gonna guide coat well. it right out the gate. Right guide out the coat gates. it because if there's something that I don't think so, but if there's something that's extremely low or extremely yeah. high, we want to address it Which right there away. Which there definitely will be. A hundred percent. I don't know. It looks uh, pretty straight. It doesn't let, look bad. Let's take a little stroll around it. There's a couple things I found just out as I'm out in the world. Like there's some stuff down there. One thing I know I need help with, because I feel like it's a real pro move, is I wanted like a beautifully a beautiful line here. And I tried like three times to get okay. the line that I want. I couldn't quite get it. So hopefully you have some insight on how to do that. Well, we do um, this. I mean, you have enough material on here to probably get it pretty close to that. Anything we don't, we'll put a little bit of putty on there. Fiberglass. Yeah. Well, what I, more what like I a use. putty. Yeah, you use fiberglass on it now. Yeah. We'll use more of a putty because they get that really nice tight edge. Yeah. Which, I, you know, does it take the tight edge? Do you want that tight edge? Well, because I mean, the car is a round car. It's worth a conversation. Yes. For sure. Um, the, the car is definitely a round car. I don't know if you're going to want that. I mean, it's going away from the contour of the car. 
cars made with a lot of round, like some yeah. smooth edges. If you go sharp, it's taken away from the actual style of the car. My, that's sure. my opinion. Well, that's the, my opinion. The part I wanted to, to really make sure I did is I wanted it just to be even, no matter what it was. Okay. All so right. what I thought maybe is it could be sharp that sort of blends into like a okay. rounded yeah. thing. Yeah, like, because these are custom anyway. So it's not. Yeah, it's all so, me. Exactly. It's whatever I want. So um, exactly, it's all whatever you want. Right, but otherwise, uh, like I'm, I'm so excited to finally get it here and, and work with your dudes and see how the pros really do it. Perfect. Um, so that'll be kind of the next phase. Is now that it's here, we will start the process of block sanding this. Uh, you think 80? Is that where we start? No, we're going to start 150. Start 150. 80 is going to be a little bit too aggressive. Okay. Uh, we don't want to get really deep into that filler and all that stuff. We want to use what's here to to uh, cover up the low spots. Yeah. But uh, I think going 80 is going to be a little too aggressive. Okay. We go with a 150. Yeah. And uh, you know, back in the day, we used to use like a 220 wet. Yeah. But because of environmental things, right now we got to contain all the water and stuff like that. So we do a right. lot more dry sanding now than we used to. Oh, okay. So doing it with the uh, 150 dry or 180 dry, I should say, um, it still give us that uh, the results that we need. And it'll be smooth enough to we'll, we can put just a light coat of. Uh, primer on it again and then start water and, and start sanding it down to for for I was just uh, gonna paint. ask like there, there's the chances of getting another coat of primer are fairly 100%. high. 100%. <laughs> okay. 100%. 100% getting primer. <laughs> yeah. Okay and so then the outside's gonna be body color which has not yet been revealed. The inside I've changed my mind changed on mind this. On the paint? I've changed my mind on the interior. <laughs> um, due to my buddy uh, Jeff who's in Australia he said don't do body color on the interior. Do it satin black like Porsche did. There's a okay. reason why they did that. Okay. It's because it pokes out in a bunch of different spots. Okay. We may still do body color in a couple spots, but like I was like, all right, he's right. he's always ahead of me in the game. I got you. So I want to make sure that we get that right. And then you know everything else. It's, I'm, I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. Anyway, awesome. Uh, Henry, as always, thank Costa Mesa Collision, and uh, you'll be seeing a lot of us doing this job on this car over the next couple of videos. Yes. So as always, thank you, sir. You got it. All right, dudes. Well, that is it. It is here at Costa Mesa Collision. I'm so excited. So the next video that we do uh, on this car is going to be uh, blocking the whole thing out. So we're going to completely block sand the car, hopefully fix the high stuff and the low stuff and get it super straight. Another coat of primer, as Henry said, and then we're off to the races. We're like, we're off to the races. So I'm um, super excited. It's a very exciting time after two years of body work and uh, getting this thing dialed. So, thank you for watching. As always, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. This is about to get amazing as we assemble this beautiful car that we've been building for two years. Thanks for watching. You guys keep on rocking. I'll see you soon. I'm literally editing this video right now, so I thought I'd just do this quick little breakdown. So what you're about to see is, um, I'm at the very tail end of a blasting job where I was doing the underside of the rockers. And there's already a couple of things wrong with this. Number one, I should have never been shooting on my back towards my legs. I was sort of lying prone and it was kind of on my side. Uh, I shouldn't have been doing that. I should have been kneeling or sitting so that I was in no way in the line of fire of the blaster. Very easy to get complacent and forget about the power when, you know, I've got my audiobook in and I'm just sort of sweeping the paint away. It's just one of those things. Number two, I didn't know it at the time, but what had happened was um, my blaster has two hoses. One's like the main fire hose and the other one is this little half inch hose that runs alongside and it's an air hose that allows the, uh, what's called a dead man switch to uh, open and close. So as I release it, the blaster stops blasting. What happened was the hose had wrapped around my face and I tried to get up and I couldn't, and I didn't know what it was. I thought I was hooked in the back somehow. And so I started futzing with it, forgetting the fact that I had this 120 PSI, you know, rocket ship firing uh, recycled bottle glass at full force. And the part that's crazy that, I, again, I had no idea until I actually saw this video is that it was point blank. It was right up against my leg. Um, 
to be truly honest, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm here. Um, I could have one inch or so, inch and a half this way, I would have hit my femoral artery and I would have had two minutes left on the planet. So super happy that that happened uh, the way it did because it could have been worse. If you'd like to see the gory aftermath, you can DM me on Instagram and I will send it to you. I'm not gonna put it on uh, YouTube. All right, that's all.